Good evening. I'm going to introduce uh, or ask each of our distinguished guests to uh, say a few words of welcome, and then I will uh, begin uh, a brief moderated discussion with some questions that have been selected for the Governor and the Premier. So we'll start. Good evening, Governor Shumlin, and welcome to the University of Vermont. Hey, thanks so much, David. Thank you, David, Michelle, UVM family, uh, to all of you for being here tonight. And uh, it's a real honor to be hosting uh, my friend, Premier Couillard, here in Vermont. I can tell you that uh, we have a partnership that is critically important to the state of Vermont. And when you think about our partnership, we have to remember that, you know, Quebec is our single largest trading partner. Uh, we do $4.6 billion worth of trade with each other. We have 475,000 trucks that cross our border every single year. We have over 5 million visitors that cross that border. But most importantly, uh, we are intertwined, not only in terms of jobs, economic development, our most beautiful lake, which we share together, our natural resources, but transportation, rail, energy, most importantly, family. It's hard to find a Vermonter who doesn't have someone who lives on one side of the border or the other that they love deeply. So I've gotten to know uh, the Premier since he was elected. Uh, he's an extraordinary gift to Quebec and a great gift to Vermont. And I look forward to not only a, a great dialogue tonight, but a continuing relationship where we build the family of Vermont and Quebec to have a very bright future. So welcome, and it's a delight to have you here. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome Premier Cuillard to the University of Vermont. We're, we're so delighted and truly honored that you're here with us this evening. And it's a pleasure for me to be here. I just want to say first that I had, for the first time, a taste of a heady topper. That's the right <laughs> way. I think it's a significant event in a person's life in Vermont, so I felt, I felt that I needed to share this with you. And it's really good. Uh, let me also say thanks to Peter, Governor Shumlin, for his hospitality. I, I think as soon as we met, we sensed, we felt that there was a very powerful connection between the two of us, uh, like-minded people, uh, people who share uh, priorities, who share some impatience towards ideas without execution and want things done, and this is the case for Peter. And we've been able to build on this long-standing relationship between Quebec and Vermont that dates really years and years, centuries even, you could say, walking around Vermont and hearing people's names, you know that there is common history there. But it's more than history now, it's a true partnership. Of course, we are important trading partners. Our trade has increased by 40% between 2010 and 2014. I don't think there's a lot of examples of that magnitude in the northeastern uh, uh, regions of North America. We also uh, are linked more and more with an objective, and Governor Shumlin, who has great vision, was kind enough to say this many times today, uh, of leaving a better place for the next generation after we, uh, both uh, Peter and myself, uh, move, move on for other people, younger people, to, to succeed us. And of course, I'm talking here about both connected subjects of energy and climate change. Uh, we know that uh, both Quebecers and Vermonters are quite attached to the environment, to the need of uh, sticking to clean, renewable energy, and to be part of the global fight and struggle against climate change uh, under common objectives, different approaches, but more and more uh, in convergence. So I want to thank uh, Peter for this because this issue, climate, is the issue of our generation and our responsibility towards the next generation. And it's how we're going to handle it that's going to make a difference years and years down the line. Not, not for the next election, as you know, for the next generation. And I think this is why people are in politics. And I'm very fortunate that I found uh, Governor Shumlin. And I want to say to Vermonters that you're really lucky to have a man of this caliber as your, as your governor, Peter. It's an honor for me uh, to know you. And lastly, I want to congratulate the university for putting this symposium together, this conference together. We already do lots of things together on the energy front, but I think we can do much more and maybe things a little bit differently. So let's have a conversation then. Thank you. 
Well, it's fitting that we're sitting here in the Davis Center, um, which is, I think, one of the most beautiful spaces on the campus. And we affectionately refer to this space as the University of Vermont's living room. So it's fitting that we have sort of a, a dialogue or a conversation. Um, so that's the next portion of our program this evening. I, I will uh, moderate a dialogue between Governor Shumlin and Premier Cuillard on the pressing topics of energy and climate change and the environment and transportation and economic development. You correct me if I'm wrong, but are we, is our comments stand between them and their dinner? Because I'd like to get reelected. It, it does. Uh, <laughs> and, and I've got people that are going to flash we'll lights at me short. if we go too long. Uh, I'm going to uh, serve as the moderator during this brief discussion. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll pose some questions that we've that developed. So, uh, so let's begin. And I'm going to alternate between the two of you as far as who gets to go first. All right. So the first question has to do with energy. Uh, Cross-border cooperation on energy issues, of course, is not a new phenomenon for Quebec and Vermont. We have a long history, as you've just mentioned, of strategic partnerships on energy and, in particular, relationships between Vermont utilities and Hydro-Quebec. From each of your respective standpoints, what have been the greatest benefits of the energy relationship to date, and what do you see as opportunities for further collaboration going forward? Governor Shumlin, let's start with you. Well. Uh, Vermont has a 30-year history, as you all know, with Hydro-Quebec, one that's been absolutely critical to our energy future. And I think it's worth pointing out two things that we sometimes don't talk enough about. First, uh, you know, our neighbors are having some real power spikes right now. Uh, New Hampshire, some, some of our communities over there, you know, living free and die, they're playing high rates. Uh, we happen to be in a state that literally had two consecutive years of rate decreases. And one of the reasons for that is because of our long-term uh, relationship with the green, clean, renewable power that we're bringing down from Hydro-Quebec. Now, I've got to tell you that our other neighbors have not been wise enough to do that. Now, they're lining up. They're getting it. We're having conversations now with Northeast governors who are anxious to get on a party. But that's done two things for us in Vermont. And the relationship's incredibly important. Uh, one is obviously keeping us economically competitive, but most importantly, with an energy portfolio in terms of what Premier Couillard was just talking about, our obligation to leave this planet better than the way we found it. Uh, we're able, because of that base load green power, to really have one of the cleanest portfolios anywhere in America. Second, we're with the first state to call hydropower green power regardless of size. And I was happy to work with Shap Smith and others to push that through back when I was in the Senate. Listen, I understand the difference between, uh, you know, coal and oil and hydro and solar. I've never gotten, quite gotten the distinction between, you know, big coal and little coal or big oil and litter oil or big hydro and little hydro. So we removed the distinction as a state and said hydro is green power and size, in this case, you know, doesn't matter much. That's been important. Third, it's allowed us to do what our utilities, Velco, and our entire energy community is doing by building out, you know, we've quadrupled the number of solar panels in the state in the last five years since I've been governor. Quad I'm sorry, five times, five times the number of solar panels, right, Darren? Uh, we are working together on an energy model I know you heard about today. I was talking to some of the folks from Montreal who said, you know, I said, what did you come out of today? They said, you know, your utility execs down here, you know, they, they must be drinking heady topper. I mean, they've got a business model that we've never heard utility execs endorse. You know, going in on bill financing, taking old homes, blowing them full of cellulose, ripping out the windows and the doors, making them tight, putting solar panels on a roof, heat pumps in the basement storage somewhere, pumping it back into the grid in cooperation with government that gets them a fair rate of return. That's your utility co company model? I mean, you, we all don't realize in Vermont how unusual that is. So the answer is our base load green power from Hydro-Quebec allows us to build out the rest of our renewables and provide clean, green, affordable power that as Premier Couillard knows so well, is going to ensure that our kids and grandkids have a livable planet and ensure that Vermonters have cheap, 
available green power for on into the future. So it's a great partnership. We'd be lost without Quebec in this partnership, and we've got to keep the partnership going. Thank you. Premier Couillard. Well, thank you. <laughs> Quebec made a very important strategic choice in the 70s. And my predecessor, Robert Bourassa, uh, I think you heard from his uh, chief of staff, John Perizella, today, had to make a choice between going nuclear along the St. Lawrence, as some people were advo advocating them, or going hydro in the north. And we now know, of course, that he took the right decision and made the wise choice. To the extent that now us, your neighbor to the north, is the fourth largest producer of hydroelectricity in the world, with expertise recognized all around the planet, and a great asset for the coming century. Of course, we have so much capacity that we have, as we say, not surpluses, I'd rather say available energy, that we can use at home to attract businesses and create jobs, that's one option, or that we can sell to our neighbors. And we've been having a long-standing relationship with Vermont and New England on this aspect. Governor Shumlin was uh, saying rightly, and we think it should be recognized again and again, that he's the first, Vermont is the first state that officially recognized that hydroelectricity is actually clean energy, which sounds rather obvious to me, but I guess there must be other reasons why you know, this recognition is not universal yet, but it, it will be. There's no other choice. It's perfectly renewable, it's storable, how do you store hydroelectricity? You just let the water go up behind the dam and wait until the man comes, and then you can set it or use it for your economic development. And the other thing is that because of this great luck we had of having this vast resource up north, it, always, uh, it also uh, adds to the fact that 98% of our electricity now is made of renewable sources. And in today's world and in tomorrow's world, it's tremendously imp important. And we also insist to make a link between this choice that we made and we will made, make and obviously share the choice with our neighbors and the issue of climate change and carbon. Uh, Quebec has been engaged with California on a carbon trade system since 2013. It's the only example in the world of two subnational states of two different countries joining forces in a carbon market and it's more and more being recognized, and we are attracting new partners, and we've had many conversations with Governor Shumlin and our neighbors in Canada, California, Oregon, state of Washington. That's the way to go. So the two have to be linked. And it's important to know also that uh, we are proud Canadians, very happy to be both Quebecers and Canadians. The Canadian narrative on energy involves, of course, hydrocarbons, fossil fuels, and it created prosperity in Canada. But the other half of this narrative is renewable energy and hydroelectricity. It has to be said again and again. So we hope that we can develop new markets and new opportunities with New England and Vermont in particular. It's obvious though that if we are going to add capacity, we need to add transmission capacity at all. And I know it's an important discussion in New England uh, among various projects and Peter was wise enough today at our press conference not to express a, a choice between the three projects right now in front of us, but it's, it's definitely the case that if we want to go further and extend our trade, we need to grow our transmission capacity. And also, I think and I hope, work hand in hand in the, on the question of uh, climate change and carbon. Because not only do we want to live a better planet for the next generation, but we also know now that the words better planet means low carbon planet. And everybody has to play its, its role or our role. And we want to do this, and we want to do it with partners, such as our New England neighbors, and Vermont in particular. Again, like-minded people. It's always easier to do business and trade with people who think in general like you do. On many aspects, if you poll Quebecers and Vermonters, you'll find similar attitudes. On society, choices we have to make, sustainable development, climate, politics in general, interestingly enough. So who else could be better positioned than Vermont and Quebec, New England and Quebec, to show the world what can be done between neighbors in the inter for the interest of the whole planet, the whole continent, and next generation. So I hope out of this conference today, ideas will come to show us the way to grow this transmission capacity I was alluding to a little bit earlier, and also help us always to connect the choice we make of the source of energy we use 
with broader area, broader questions such as climate change and carbon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't often get to do this, but Governor, Premier, we're gonna we're on a, a time schedule here, <laughs> so I'm gonna ask the answers to be a little bit briefer so we can get through the questions. Do you want to have dinner or not? Really? No. Um, and I. Uh, I this never part thought of, I would have part the of our health effort in both uh, Quebec and Vermont. Keep <laughs> folks maybe, waiting. Maybe down. we should hungry. bring the speaker to the stage here. You would <laughs> tell us when to stop. So you introduced the. Uh, thank you both. You introduced the topic of climate change and environment, and I thought we'd go there for a moment. Over the last few years, of course, we've had a number of natural disasters in the Northeast, including Tropical Storm Irene and massive floods across the Lake Champlain Basin and, and Hurricane Sandy. And the intensification of these types of natural events is unquestionably a manifestation of, of climate change. So how can we work together to address these issues? And I start with Premier Cuillard. Oh, first, we have to tell our people the impact of this phenomenon here, not on the other side of the planet, here. Today, Government Shandland and I signed a renewable, a renewed agreement on Lake Champlain. And the algae question was mentioned by Governor Shandland, obviously related to what you just mentioned. More flooding, more extreme weather events lead to more problems of this kind. So you have to tell people first that it's happening. If they just look, they will see the consequences of it. And when people ask politicians, how much is it going to cost to fight climate change? The right question, how much is it costing not to fight climate change? In terms of healthcare, coastal erosion, these type of consequences on Lake Champlain here. So it's our job to do this, that's the first message. The second message is people should never be presented with the choice between fighting climate change and creating jobs. You can do both. We have companies here doing this as we speak. Out of this new economy, you can create new jobs and better jobs actually for our fellow citizens. And the key, of course, and I think we all agree in this room, but it's not always the case. First, you have to decide that you believe that climate change exists. I guess maybe, uh, un unless we have a dissenter here, I guess probably we all agree on this. Then the main cause, not the only cause, but the main cause of this is uh, human carbon, and therefore that the price must be attached to carbon. So I must really recognize President Obama's initiative in showing US citizens the impact and the cost of climate change, and pushing some initiatives, one of which of course ended up here in New England with the original greenhouse gas initiative that I hope we can link in some way with our, uh, car with our uh, carbon uh, market. So only, I'm convinced that only when people accept, our citizens accept, that it will not be to their detriment, that if we engage in this struggle, that we can actually create a better life for them, not only quality of life and environment, but economically also positive, then we will win. And we have to repeat this day and day and day. Thank you. Governor Shumlin. You can imagine the joy that I felt the first time I met Premier Couillard and we were up in New Hampshire and you know, I know we have gubernatorial elections frequently in Vermont every two years. Uh, let's remember I've been governor for a little over four and I've had three premiers. So I came to meet the new one. And uh, that basically was the first thing he said to me, what he just said to you. And it's so rare to find public officials who understand and are committed to the kind of progress that this premier is, and we're in it together. So the only thing I would add to what he just said is, uh, practically, the disasters that we face, whether it's Irene or the other flooding, a few years ago when we had the highest lake levels ever recorded in the history of Lake Champlain, you know, they're at the receive, they're, they're next, and as soon as it hits down to Rochelot, Quebecois are getting flooded out of their homes. They're facing the same erosion issues, the same environmental challenges. So we are intertwined on this opportunity to create jobs, lead, and put our pro the best of what we're all doing together into a package that we can all not only get behind as a state as in a province, but spread across the country, involve our Reggie partners, as uh, the Premier just said, and involve anyone that can come along. So it's a job creator, it's incredibly important. I think we're on the right track. Our partnership is critical, not only to our energy future, but to jobs. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I'd like to turn next to transportation, another theme. And I have two smaller questions around transportation. The first one, and we'll start with Governor Shumlin. The first one, what transportation projects being developed in either Quebec or Vermont would produce economic and environmental benefits to both Quebec and Vermont? Governor? Well, first of all, the EV uh, stations that we've committed to install from Montreal to Burlington to Boston, by the way, we've got about 23 in already, and we want to extend it all the way down. Some of them are, you know, the high-speed chargers, some are the older model, but we're getting it done. Second, uh, the uh, rail corridor, higher-speed rail between New York to Montreal with a spur to Boston, with a western ring coming up in the western part of, the, of Vermont meeting here in Burlington. That is critical. President Obama uh, and Prime Minister Harper signed an agreement uh, a week ago that's going to allow us, we hope, uh, to, and, and the Premier and I agreed today that we're going to put our A-teams on trying to get through the rest of the struggles there so that we can literally have instant border crossing uh, at, uh, what do you call it, Union Station, Main Station in Montreal, Central Station in Montreal and bring back the Montrealer from New York to Montreal all the way through Vermont. It'll be a huge help to us. <laughs> Third and finally, uh, A35 and the improvements there is critical. Uh, the Premier was good enough to invite me up to a ribbon cutting of a big section of that. For those of you that travel to Montreal often, uh, yeah, I'm responsible for your speedier travel. Speedier travel. Uh, Truthfully, the Premier's been uh, great in not only getting that project done, but committing to get the rest of it done. And that's going to help those 475,000 trucks, those, four, those $5 million tourists that are cruising through those borders. So transportation corridor, moving it to green, clean, electric, train, rail, and frankly, speedier, safer travel is all critical to our economic and, uh, and social future. Thank you. Um, since you brought up A35, I'm going to combine the two questions on transportation. So we'll also include the freight and passenger uh, projects as well. Yes. Premier? Yes. Well, A35 uh, is, a, is an economically important project for us. It's not only another highway to, to complete. It's, a, it's part of what we need to have the highest level possible trade possible between the U.S. and Canada. So it's, it's up, up there in the list of priorities. But it also connects to our previous uh, discussion. The main source of our greenhouse gases, and I would suspect this is the same here, is transportation, heavy transportation trucks in particular. So just to give you an example of the power of a carbon trading system, we have a company, actually part of the delegation, I don't know if they, I don't know if they are in the room tonight, Transport Robert, are you around? It's a big trucking company in Quebec that is part, of course they have to be part of the uh, carbon trade. So they had to decide and this is the power of the, of the system. Do I, am I going to pay for credits every year and hurt my bottom line? Or am I going to be smarter and invest in new technology so that I don't need to buy the credits? So they, they are right now transforming all their engines from diesel to LNG, cutting significantly their emissions. So they made the right choice. And this type of policy puts the burden on the shoulders of people who emit greenhouse gases, as they have to make the decisions. I'm glad that you mentioned electric vehicle. We have such a great opportunity to work uh, together on this, because the big, what is the big question of, on uh, electric car? is the autonomy and the battery. You know, when we can bring the price down, when people have more than 200 kilometers of autonomy, when they have a reliable battery, then you'll see the adoption going up. And we have great universities, great research centers on both sides of the border. And this is also something we should be working on. And eventually this uh, line of uh, chain of uh, charging stations that you mentioned is, I hope, going to reach to Boston one day. I really hope that we discuss this once. And I hope we can do this. So I can I have a vision, I think I, we will see it, of families uh, driving from Montreal to Boston with electric cars and being able to charge their cars along the way. That's a very significant contribution we would make together uh, on, the, on this issue. Thank you very much. So the, the last question and theme has to do with economic development. Vermont is known for being an innovative and an entrepreneurial state, and we're committed to fostering good ideas and helping them to grow into successful businesses. There are so many promising and exciting ideas in the fields of energy and environment. Many are coming from our top universities and many forward-looking businesses. 
So how might we work together on enhancing these initiatives to foster economic development on both sides of our border? Premier Cuillard. I think first we have to boast a little bit more. Uh, people know in Quebec that you know, Vermont is a fantastic tourist destination, great place to visit for a weekend, but people don't know enough about the importance and the size of our trade relationship. And I was quite impressed today, Governor Shumlin and I had a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce in which we heard the innovative part of what you were just mentioning. And it happens to be also something we're, we're putting up there in, the, in our list of priorities, the new economy, digital economy, our young entrepreneurs that are living and will live in a different world than the world that we know today. And we have a fantastic ecosystem. And we all know that politicians can act on the economy not by creating jobs themselves. It's a big mistake that politicians always do. I am going to create jobs. No. You make it so that the economy creates jobs and entrepreneurs create jobs by providing the right environment, fiscal, regulation, etc., and, and a choice of priorities. So we agreed that we would increase the level of our business meetings between our companies. Uh, first, tell more what we do, say more what we do, and again, as I said, boast a little bit more. You should do this. And make, make it so that our companies meet on a regular basis uh, to work on projects. I know this has been happening here today and will happen tomorrow, but I think we could certainly upgrade this to a higher level. Thank you very much. Governor Shumlin. You know, I think Premier Couillard uh, hit it on the head. Uh, we had a great conversation today. I want to thank the Chamber, GBIC, and the, and the folks were, were, that were present. But bottom line is uh, we have to do a better job of marketing Vermont not only as the best place to ski, travel, eat food, recreate, drink beer, and so forth, but also as an innovative job center. And there are ways that we can do that where we are enhancing job growth in Quebec and enhancing job growth in Vermont. And the Premier and I have committed to uh, put our heads together to make sure that in uh, the next six months, we use the power of the Premier's office and the Governor's office to facilitate much more in-depth conversations to market the partnership in terms of jobs between Quebec and Vermont. I think we're going to make some great progress. So I'm grateful to have a partner uh, to do that with, and we're going to use our energies to, to try and be more proactive and more innovative in that regard. Maybe a short addition, short, don't worry. I was impressed uh, at the meeting with the Chamber of Commerce that the representative of the Technical College was there. It's the first time I see this. Usually when you are attending Chamber of Commerce meetings, which is normal, you have businesses facing businesses. But to have the Technical College representative there shows that you know that training is the key. As I was saying today, we don't have an unemployment issue anymore. We have an employee issue. And in order for our young people to take the, the, the jobs, not only of today, of tomorrow, we, we really need to work much, work much harder on training. And I think we could even have links between your system of professional and vocational training and what we do so that young people can work with the same type of training on both sides of the border. That would be also an interesting project to push forward. He was actually there because the speakers cut his budget so badly he was hungry. He wasn't there for the... Uh... <laughs> But just never get cut, they get adjusted. Uh, thank you both very much for the answers today. Thank you. Thank you.